Hey everybody, it's Ian Riccoboni, the voice of Ring of Honor Wrestling, and you are watching the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast. You're watching DCTV. Now here's your host, the voice, Dave Canning. It's you, it's me, it's DCTV. It's you, it's me, it's DCTV, uh-huh. Let's start the show. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. It is you, it is me, it is NRND. And tonight on episode 20 of the Wrestling Nerd Broadcast, we are honored to have the voice of Ring of Honor Wrestling from Allentown, Pennsylvania, Mr. Ian Riccoboni. Hey, thanks so much for having me, everybody. You know, Allentown, you can't tell the story of a professional wrestling finishing Allentown, as crazy as that is. It's where the Iron Sheik got red hot. It's where Hulkamania started. And uh, it's, it was the home of television wrestling for over six years. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's kind of in my blood since I've been born here. And uh, I'm so glad to join you here tonight. Well, this is, this is amazing. For me personally, as a broadcast journalism student, uh, Okay, fab everyone. It is my birthday when we were recording this. So to hey. have to have someone like Ian from from the voice of Walter Panis to the voice of Ring of Honor, this is just this is the best birthday ever. So so yes, well, I'm sorry that I'm giggling and blushing so much today. So <laughs> well, happy birthday. And, and you know, even my uh I don't even make my wife feel this way, so I'm, I'm very flat. <laughs> <laughs> we try, yeah. So um so we, we started this show 20 weeks ago now almost um, as the Micro Brawler broadcast. And so we changed our name for legal purposes. Um, but so we, when we started this, one of our goals was to have people who have been immortalized in Micro Brawler form, uh, which is why we are so honored to have you here today. Um, so let's, let's just talk about that. How did that whole process start? How did, did you approach pro wrestling tees? Did they approach you? How did that all come to be? Yeah, uh, with how successful the Micro Brothers are now, a lot of people don't know or, or don't realize, unless you're very close to, to Ryan at Pro Wrestling Tees or even Colt Cabana, that there was a moment where they were on their deathbed. And there was a moment where you just had this surplus and it wasn't the fault of the wrestlers involved. It wasn't the fault of companies that were involved. Um, there, there just wasn't a super amount of interest. And there was interest in them as items that came in the crate and, and those were popular, but when they would come out with the 12 person sets or the 20 person sets, they just started to feel a little flat. And it's something that they're awesome and they're awesome toys and figurines. And, and Colt Cabana, my, my broadcast partner at the time, knew I collected them. And I always joked around with him and he and I said, man, if, man, I just want to call Madison Square Garden and get an action figure and I'll retire. Well, one of those ended up happening. <laughs> Yep, <laughs> And then he said uh, about that action figure, uh, there might not be a whole lot of time left for the micro brawlers. They just haven't been selling well. Um, you know, have all the big names and they, they're just not moving right now. They're going to keep keep on the crate. If you want to try and get one, now's your shot. He's like, I can't guarantee anything, but if, if you really wanted an action figure, you might be able to get in the last set. And by last, it was going to be final, final. And so as far as I was told. Now, of course, things changed. Right around the time my set comes out, Zach Ryder, uh, excuse me, Matt Cardone, <laughs> Brian Myers, they start talking about them. And then as my set comes out, their, their stomp in Paradise once come out in the crates. And all of a sudden, there's this whole new set of eyeballs on them. And suddenly, the thousands and thousands of people that listen to their podcast are going back to try and get the originals. And we're going back and suddenly shophonor.com is gone. They're sold out of all, you know, of all the micro brothers. Suddenly Parsley Tease is gone. The Arn Anderson, Ale, uh, all the, you know, those guys start moving. Terry Funk just start flying off the shelves at Parsley Tease. So I got in right at that period where it just didn't seem like it was going to be sustainable. And the, the way we did it was at the time I was the most limited micro brother. And now they've done slightly limited ones, uh, more limited ones. I know Iron Peak was 150 out of the gate. I think the original Owen Hart uh, might have been uh, less than 500, but I, I was told mine was a 500 piece release um, and it was the most limited at the time. And that was part of the hook. And the hook was, okay, you're not super notable. You know, if Arn Anderson's having trouble selling stuff, if, um, you know, if we got Jay Lee on the shelves, if we got Cody on the shelves, then why is Ian Riccoboni going to sell? 
So I've been working with this organization, Bradbury Sullivan, and we've been trying to raise awareness for their services that they provide to LGBTQ folks in the Lehigh Valley. And it seemed like a natural fit. We want to do something fun for Pride Month. So I said, you know what, I'll donate all the proceeds to Bradbury Sullivan and um, hopefully get some awareness and, and get involved. And that seemed to be enough to get things going. And um, it was really exciting. I'm officially sold out, sold out. The only place you can get me is eBay now. And uh, it's funny because the, uh, you know, it, it, I'd never anticipated that. I was I scared to death I'd be a shell former, especially knowing that before uh, you know, Matt and Brian really shined a light on how cool these things are, because they're really amazing figures. And they're so, they're, they, you can display them anywhere. You can have shelves with them. I have little nail polish displays that I put the guys on and uh, you just, you put them anywhere. They look awesome. And the level of detail um, before they brought them to a super huge audience, uh, it was just one of those things where it, it, was, it felt like it was on track to just be a cool flash in the pan and then kind of go away. But once they started talking about them, um, you know, people started to realize just how awesome they were. I mean, Tanahashi sat on that website for a year, you know, and that is the most detailed action figure I think that's ever been released that is not from a major company. And it's the coolest action figure that's ever been released uh, that's not from a major company. Um, that just shows you, number one, um, just the, the power of marketing. You know, Brian and Matt just talked about them being able to, you know, suddenly all you need is somebody to say, hey, here they are. Here are these awesome action figures. Uh, and then suddenly they start flying off the shelves and uh, it, I'll, I'll say this, it, it made getting Billy Gunn and X-Pac a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Now with the rollers, are you a completionist by the way, or do you just have the select ones that uh, you can get your hands on? I was, I was even through Billy Gunn and X-Pac. Um, I lost track of that at Owen Hart. Uh, you know, I missed, I missed the original Owen. And then the uh, the AEW ones, I got a notice they were going for pre-sale. They were pre-sale for a while, and uh, I'm just getting the ones that they're that are affordable right now. Um, I love every single person in that set. I've worked with many of them, but um, I've also started a Moses Malone basketball card collection <laughs> in the quarantine. <laughs> so I have to pick and choose what I'm collecting these days. So uh, I still get crates. You know, I get the crates. I get all the fun stuff. I like collecting the pins too. Those are cool, um, but I've, uh, I was a completionist through set six, and then, um, you know, as Impact and AEW, uh, I started to pick and choose just folks that I've, I've worked with all matches for. Yeah, and I'm a, and when one of the, the big topics of discussion in, in the Micro Brawler fan group that everyone is uh, welcome to join, I believe you're a member of it, actually, um, mm -hmm. but um, is autograph Micro Brawlers. And I, I have to say, this is going to be me fanboying again. But you have the neatest signature on, especially on, there it is on the screen for Ryan. You have, it's, your penmanship is incredible. The fact that you get happy wrestling, you had the personalization on mine. It, it's just astounding. Whereas some of these guys, it looks like just a smudge yeah, of ink. Not normally the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're tricky. And I'm, you know, I'm just supremely flattered that anybody's even asking for my honor. You know, at this point, I'm, I'm flattered that there's an action figure. So I'm an autograph for myself, or I was, um, you know, somebody had, somebody kind of cold called me the other day to be on a podcast. And I wasn't so upset that because back in the day, uh, I used to collect autographs through the mail. So I used to collect baseball, you know, former Phillies. I have a, I have a bin this big, just of individual autograph cards, whether it be, you know, Von Hayes, John Crook, Darren Dalton, uh, Murphy, um, the, you know, the 93 team, the, those teams uh, kind of stopped when I got to college. So I got Cole Hamill and Ryan Howard, Chase Utley that way. Um, so I was an autograph collector. So I understand that like a lot of this is public record and whatnot. Uh, I'm, I also remember kind of the thrill of the chase and how exciting it was to um, get your favorites autographs and things like that. So when I have the opportunity and somebody asked me for something like that, um, I want to do something a little different. I always liked when, um, you know, Mike Schmidt would inscribe MVP 1980 or World Series champion 1980 or Moses Malone used to sign his full for full when, when they asked him about his prediction about how the playoffs would go. Uh, four games, four games, four games and over. <laughs> so I always like to do a little inscription. Um, you know, the happy wrestling thing, that's something that Colt helped me come up with as a sign off. 
and uh, as a way to make the, the broadcast maybe a little bit more memorable. So I do my best and uh, I'm really impressed with paint pen technology these days. I got a real thin tip paint pen that helps get all of that onto the, the micro crawler. And now you mentioned uh, making the broadcast more memorable. Obviously, the past year we've been living in the COVID-19 pandemic. How has it been different for you broadcasting live matches without an audience there versus when you will have fans back in attendance for uh, Best in the World on the 11th of July? Yeah, the, can't wait until we're back in Baltimore with, with live fans on July 11th. And uh, there's we saw we had a great pre-sale so far, and the tickets will be available soon on shopon.com. But um, it actually made it more intense. It was it's one of these things where your focus I think increases because the only thing there is to focus on is when the ring, and there's no distractions. There's no um, no that and there's no worry about anything going on. There's no uh, you know, worry about, Hey, I suddenly trip over my wires and knock my monitor out anything like that. <laughs> and so for me, Caprice and Caprice and I, uh, just been able to have that, that tunnel vision, just focusing on the matches and it's, it's a really cool environment. Um, you know, what they don't say, you know, there is a drawback of not having fans, but it's an experience that I'm not going to forget anytime soon. And once the fans come back, it's kind of haunting and chilling and to, it makes it more intense because you're in this big cavernous place with just these big screens and it's silent. Otherwise, you can kind of hear the, the carry tron kind of murmur because the electricity is on mm -hmm. and it's this cool vibe. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of these weird things where I'm glad we for safety reasons, but it was such an interesting experience, too, that it's uh, it's I enjoyed for what it was, but I'm ready to have fans back. <laughs> yeah, I I think uh, I was at the, the Barclays Center for game one of the, the Nets series, and it it's just so electric to have so many people around you. And, you know, now that we're all getting vaccinated, there's just that electric. You can't replace that. So, you know, and it's I'm very excited to be able to go to wrestling shows and, and, and you know, be around people again in a, in a safe environment. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, um, I'm just so hopeful too. You mentioned vaccines. I mean, talk to your doctor. It's right for you. It's going to be right for a lot of people. And the vaccines are just increasing and increasing. So it feels like we're turning a corner. Um, you know, it's it's just there's a lot of positive momentum and a lot of uh, a lot of positive energy out there. So I I just can't wait to get to get to Baltimore again. <laughs> um, and so. Um, we obviously talked about broadcasting live matches again. Um, you were also not just the voice of Ring of Honor, but you're also the voice of Retromania. Um, yeah. So what was what was that process like? You know, because I can just imagine you've got to announce every wrestler in the game multiple times with the same moves over. Like, how does that that process go? Yeah, it was a little less intrusive than you think. Um, I went. Uh, Bolt put me in contact with uh, a very nice man named Mike. He's the executive producer of the game. The guy you see on the video blogs, on the, on the vlogs on YouTube. And um, he said, hey, uh, this guy's trying to make a wrestle fest. He's, try he's trying to get the rights to it. He's trying to uh, get the engine for it. And he wants to bring it to, to Nintendo Switch and maybe PlayStation. Um, would you want to do the commentary? Can I give him your number? And I said, sure, you know, that sounds cool. And he said, yeah, he's, um, you know, he paid me up, he paid up front. Uh, and so Colt said, yeah, he's an honest guy. He sent me a check right away and uh, at FedEx the next day. When I agreed, I got mine FedEx overnight. And, um, you know, I knew he meant business and I knew it was legit. And so uh, what he did was sent me, you know, probably 200 or 300 lines. And all he asked is that I just do two or three takes of each. Because the idea was that, you know, if there was a good, if there's a perfect take, great. If there are some good takes, they, they would do is they'd cycle through so that uh, if I said one, two, or one, you know, just different cadences so that it wouldn't be repetitive in the game. And uh, so I probably sent over about a thousand audio files. And, and the hardest part was just labeling them. You know, I didn't want to send them these blank data, like blank audio files. So the hardest part for me and where I earned my money was not actually doing the lines. It was going through and, and typing and labeling. <laughs> and, uh, tour of the Islands 1, Tour of the Islands 2, Tour of the Islands 3. Um, and one of the hardest parts too was I knew the roster before anybody else. 
And mm -hmm. so it was really neat to kind of sit on those secrets for a while that Jeff Cobb was coming or Chris Bay was coming or, uh, you know, I knew Brian Myers and Matt Cardona were coming um, probably shortly after they signed on. So uh, that was really neat too, to be a part of that kind of from that stage as well. Awesome. So you've gotten to be the voice of a video game. You're now, you're immortalized in Michael Brawler action figure form. What is higher on like the, the all-time achievement list, video what's, game what's, or, or the action figure? What's really interesting for me is I thought it would be the action figure because I thought I'd give it to my son. My son, who was three at the time when it came out, would be like, oh, it's daddy. Wow. Uh, nope. <laughs> when I showed it to him, there's a video of me unboxing it, of getting it for the first time. He doesn't realize it's me. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was so, good. It, the I, I, I actually rewatched. I rewatched it today. I saw it way back, but I watched it. <laughs> Funny, he's like, I don't know who it is, y'all. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, oh, this is cool. It's a toy, I guess. Um, but my son immediately recognized me in the video game, so oh. I got to go with the video game just because you know more than I know well more than five hundred copies of the video game have sold, so more people are enjoying that. My son noticed it. My daughter noticed it. Um, gotta go with that he's played it uh, he's probably better than i am at it uh the the timing i like the timing it's like fire pro but i'm not great at fire pro so <laughs> it's a little tricky for me so uh yeah he recognized me from the pause screen immediately and uh i gotta say that's because of that i'll give the nod to uh i'll give the nod to the game awesome um, I do, this is, this is completely off topic. So I'm sorry for my unprofessionalism, but um, for, so I, I've gotten into, bro I've been a broadcast for PA uh, for sports for a while. And so we had a girl recently, Kristen Chinquina, um, score her 1000th point for the basketball team. And so I knew that it was going to happen on such and such date. I knew when she was going to score it. So I thought to myself, what do I say when it happens? So I literally came up with a line once practiced it in my head once and that was it that's the only time I said it until she actually scored the basket for you do you ever know specific moments that are going to happen or like endings to matches you know um and do you want to know endings do you rehearse lines beforehand or anything like that no I uh I'm I'm of the Jim Ross school of thought where as little as I can know survive without knowing um I think, you know, there's different school of thought. Uh, you know, you always want to have something. If there can be something, you want to be able to hang your hat on it. Um, the only time I think I ever really thought about an ending in a meaningful way where I planned something and stuck to a plan and knew what I was going to do was that all in. Um, you know, I anticipated Cody might win the title and I anticipated the crowd would, would blow up. And so I just got out of the way. I threw my hands up and just kind of, uh, you know, Timmy Baltimore was with me at the time. Um, I think Excalibur might have been with me. And I just wanted silence. And just so that the crowd at home could hear what was going on. Uh, that was really the only time I think I thought of anything. Uh, you know, occasionally I'll keep something in my back pocket. To me, the ring walk is more important. Um, I think about the ring walks a little bit more. Uh, usually, like, a, I'll hear a song. Um, there's, uh, there's called Kiss the Goat by Ghost. They're a Norwegian heavy metal band. It essentially means you kiss the devil's butt to get what, in exchange for what you want. And uh, that fit for me for Peace Go for, for his title match. There's a, there's a line in it, Oscar Lum of Sinem. <laughs> and so, you know, I kind of, I, I think of just weird and, and wild things you put in the ring walk that might be memorable to catch somebody's ear. Uh, because I think anybody can say, okay, PCO beat Bandito. He beat this guy. He beat that guy. And now he's challenging the world title. But if you can kind of layer it and, and paint the picture of, of, of what's been exchanged and, and what's been traded in the sacrifices for the title shot, to me, that's, that's a little bit more powerful. Um, the ending though, you know, it's, uh, the ending is, is tricky. I never know what, what I never want to know what's going to happen. And sometimes I have to, <laughs> and sometimes, uh, you know, the, you gotta, but the most memorable time for me where not knowing anything was an awesome surprise was uh, we had the Hardys come in in 2017 and they came in to face the young buck 
And my executive producer was in my ear and he said, hey, there's, the lights are going to go out in a minute. He goes, there's going to be two guys in the ring. You're, you'll know who they are. I said, yeah. He, and I go, should I call them anything different than I know them as? You just, just use their first and last name. And so that was, you know, when the lights came up, holy crap, it's the Hardy, you know? So those are, you know, those can be some worthwhile surprises. Definitely. Um, last question before we get to our top three Tuesday. Um, so obviously you said one of the, we, we talked about, you know, what's, what's higher being in a video game or what's being, uh, or the brawler. What do you think was more of a special moment? The G1 super card at the garden or all in, in Chicago? Yeah. Um, I have a lot of sentimental reasons why G1, G1 was, uh, was big for me. Um, my wife and I met while we were in New York. We went to college there together and she got to come and she came with her dad and, and uh, her dad's a big Nets fan. And uh, I like but, him. Yeah. <laughs> it's way back. He was a season ticket holder uh, since 94, 93. The Sam um, Cassell years. All yeah. right. <laughs> so yeah, big Derek Coleman fan too. And uh, got a, he's got the Jason Kidd jersey hanging in his office. But nice. Um, but yeah, so it was that was cool, and a lot a couple of my friends from college who were still in New York came, and uh, they saw me after the show, and that was really neat. Um, but I'll really remember all in um, because my son uh, was about a year old; he was almost two, and that was his first big kind of cross country flight. And I just remember Starcast, and I did I called matches with fans that weekend as part of the Starcast thing. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I got to meet a lot of fans, but um, you know, my favorite wrestling moment ever happened that weekend. And it wasn't at all in, it was at Starcast. Uh, my son was having a fit in the green room and there's Jeff Jarrett, there's Tommy Young, uh, there's Tony Schiavone, there's Cody, there's <laughs> you name it. And I'm like, oh my God, kids are causing, my kids causing a ruckus. Then Scotty Steiner walks up. He goes, what are you looking at? And my son goes from absolute tears to the hugest smile on his face. And all of a sudden, Scott Steiner starts picking up Zach, throwing him around, <laughs> tossing him around. My son's having the time of his life all of a sudden. And then Jeff Jarrett walks over and says, everybody used to come over for barbecues at Scott's house when we were in TNA. He's great with kids. He's the kid whisperer. And he just loves having kids around. And he's a great dad. And he just, the kids flock to him. And my mind this big, this huge, gigantic man. And so for me, all in uh, will always be special because my wife to Chicago for the first time, who she's been all around the world. She's been to Ghana. She's been to Egypt. She's been to Italy, but she's never been to Chicago. And so I got her something she'd never been before. And uh, my son's first big cross country trip. And uh, Steiner was is the Zach Whisperer. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Wow, that just blew my mind. I mean, I know. <laughs> and I have a picture. I have a picture with me, Zach, and Scott, and it's hilarious. All right, so we will we will get to our, our top three Tuesday uh, before we let you go. So you chose as our top three Tuesday kid shows, correct? Yeah. So so we with our top three Tuesday, we do these as 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 things we want to see made into brawler form. So I think I've got some good ones. Uh, do you have your list ready? I do. Awesome. So Ian, we'll let you go first with your top three. All right. I got to go first with Pee Wee Herman. I'm a big, always loved Pee Wee Herman as a kid. Uh, I like it more now. It's just this weird, absurd, loud, fun show. <laughs> so Pee Wee Herman. Okay. Uh, next, I'd go with Maura Cork, the referee from Guts on Nickelodeon. Yes. <laughs> And because you need a referee, there's no referees yet. I don't think at the micro brawlers. So, oh, no, they have one that, they there have one is. that came out with the uh, oh, John Cohen, or well, yeah, like John the, the ref, John referee, John, yeah. John Cohen. <laughs> yes. My apologies. Well, we need a female ref, we need yes. a female ref, so we need Mo. And then, uh, finally, I go with Mark Summers, who, um, super cool guy. I interviewed him on a Phillies baseball show eight years ago and uh we still keep in touch he still takes my texts um he still responds to me on instagram when i comment on his stuff and um just a super cool guy loved him on double dare 
I um, love talking to him. Um, he and I both have obsessive compulsive disorder, which is something that a lot of people are diagnosed with and is not out in the open. Um, there's some stigma around it. So when I was a kid, it meant the world to me that when I figured out, when the doctors kind of figured out what was going on, there was somebody who I liked and I knew from TV that had it. So it was the coolest thing in the world. And then you know, when you meet your, you know, you meet your heroes, uh, this couldn't have been any better. You know, I let Mark know that, hey, thanks for doing this interview. Um, just want to let you know that I look up to you because when I was a kid, I, you were the first person I knew that had what the doctor said I had. And it was a scary time in my life. And it was comforting to know that, that one of my favorite guys on TV had it as well and that everything can be okay. And so he was just a cool dude. Um, give him a big hug. And <laughs> it was, uh, so I'd love to have him with the, uh, with the tennis shoe, with the suit, the tennis shoes and the rolled up sport jacket. Um, that'd be the perfect Michael, Moore, I think. Can we get the pie chair from what would you do as well in that? <laughs> and the pie coaster in the latest Yes. Seasons. Oh, wanted to ride that so bad as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so Nick, we will let you go next with your top three Tuesday. All right. Well, uh, I'll have to go. I'm going to go like more of the cartoon, I think. Yeah. I think that maybe like a, a Dunk Funny would be good. And with the, uh, uh, God, the, uh, the bully. Roger Klotz. Uh, Roger, Roger Klotz. There we go. Yeah. Maybe a Dunk Funny Roger Klotz, two five. Uh, maybe uh, the, uh, the thing from Legend of the Hidden Temple. Yeah, oh, back. Back. like the, yes. the, the big head that talks that would be cool <laughs> and stuff and let's see to round it out uh donkey lips from solution short yes <laughs> yes <laughs> good one <laughs> ryan who do you have for your top three tuesday I think I'm getting old. I, I got half of the references you're saying. My my child. They were all different ages. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Ryan's right. a residential old man. I, 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 just look, I just look so young. Um, okay. Ryan's brawlers will be in black and white. Uh, yeah, so, uh, maybe you're at the show. Uh, um, I'm going to go Bobby from Bobby's World. Oh, that's a good one. one. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't want to break him up, but I'm going to go Ren by himself from Ren Ooh. and Stimpy oh, and Chucky from Rugrats. Yeah, nice. He yeah. He's back tonight. Friends and Rugrats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for my top three Tuesday, I, I kept one current show because, you know, I, I hope my nephew will watch this one day. So I'm going to start with Bluey because I can actually yeah. tolerate watching Bluey. Love me some Bluey. That's a great show. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, then I'm going to go with, uh, I'm not even going to separate Rocco, the entire cast of Rocco's Modern Life, because that was <laughs> just a whole wave. That again. <laughs> yes. Just a whole wave of Rocco's Modern Life. <laughs> and then uh, one of my favorite shows growing up, Wienerville with Mark Wiener. Mark Wiener. Loved that show. So nice. that's, that's my top three. So, uh, yes, that is, uh, that's our top three Tuesday. Let us your, know your top three Tuesday in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Uh, Ian, the floor is yours to plug away whatever you may want, social media, merchandise, whatever you got. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, I'm all sold out of merch. <laughs> the microfollers, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for selling them out. Uh, raised over a 1000 bucks for Bradbury Sullivan, so appreciate that. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, big thing, July 11th pay-per-view best in the world all the titles on the line live fans uh shop honor.com tickets honor club is the way to watch it it's 9.99 yeah it's one of the best in wrestling i will say this if you get it in july there's a good chance it will be useful wink 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 so can't announce what's happening yet i'm gonna be g fans i can't announce what's about to happen but um, <laughs> i'll give you a teaser it will be good. uh baltimore is not the first and last baltimore is the first and some so uh yeah i'm very excited about that i'm gonna be at the uh gonna be at lot eight i'm gonna be at the big party uh with brian myers matt cardona i'm gonna be the the host of the the evening um at least in some part <laughs> so <laughs> that'll be a lot of fun there's surprise guests coming your way and uh yeah i do a podcast with carrie silken last stop penn station there's some ring of honor but it's about mostly carries and trials and tribulations to the 70s 80s and 90s 
Uh, Kerry's had an awesome interest life where he's made a lot of mistakes, but he's paid it back and then some um, in terms of the good things he's done and some of the lessons he's learned. Uh, we talk a lot about, about sex, drugs, and rock and roll in the 70s and 80s and uh, some of the debauchery he found himself in and how he got out of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, those are the things that are going on right now. Awesome. So yes, that's going to do it for this episode. Don't make, don't forget to go to pro wrestling tees.com slash the wrestling nerd broadcast. That is nerd spelled N R D for your t-shirts. We've got snapbacks. We've got more designs on the way there. Patreon.com slash W N R D B Facebook, Twitter, uh, W N R D B all the good stuff there. And of course, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and share this video with your friends so that you can see our great show here with our guest, the voice of ring of honor wrestling, Mr. Ian Riccoboni. Ian, thank you so much for coming on. This has been an absolute pleasure, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dave. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Ryan. And uh, yeah, happy wrestling. Thanks so much for having me. Yes. Thank you, Ian. And so on behalf of Nick, Ryan, myself, and Ian Riccoboni, don't forget to tell your mother you love her every day because like Kevin Durant said, Mom, you're the real MVP. Good night, everyone, and God bless America. Thank you.